the material and how did you how did you approach it initially? Since you really, I mean, was there a, a movie that inspired you or? Uh, I, well, I I read the I read the script pretty soon after I finished Backbeat, my first movie, which was about the Beatles. It wasn't so much about the Beatles; it was about the the sort of the, the triangle of John Lennon, Stuart Sutcliffe, and Astrid Kirk that inspired partly inspired the Beatles before they became who everybody. <laughs> Uh, knew them to be subsequently, and I was, um, I don't even think that back then would come out when I got the script, and United Artists um, were very, very enthusiastic about back then, and they, you know, they, they were kind of looking for the <coughs> um, and what appealed to me was there was a kind of freshness and a buoyancy about it, and a kind of sense of fun, um, and at the same time, I realized that I just made a film which was about a kind of a, a change in popular culture, or the beginning of <coughs> popular culture, beginning of the 60s. And I think I had the idea in my mind that, you know, having done something that looked back 20, 30 years, it'd be really interesting to, to say what was just around the corner, what was the next rock and roll? Um, and, you know, I didn't come with a, te a technical background. And so I think we all stuck our necks out and said, let's make this you know, if, if the drug of Hamburg was speed, then the kind of the the, the analogous drug of uh, of kind of the, the you know the new cyber culture was kind of a, a kind of a cyberdelic equivalent of LSD, mm -hmm. um, and and that kind of helped really with getting a sense of how do you visualize or how do you describe <coughs> or how do you tell a story how do you get inside people's heads when actually there's nothing to film. You know, you can't film the transfer of data. Um, and I wanted it to be like an inner space, you know, you might have picked up some sort of references to 2001. Um, and I wanted it to be that, you know, kind of psychedelic thing. And, and, and the script didn't have so much of that. I, mean, I, I think the script had, you know, a lot of, um, a lot of the kind of quirkiness in there and, the, and, and, the, and how clearly defined all the characters were. Um, but the, the, cy the, the Cyberdelia Club, that I think was a cafe in there. In, in the script, so and the database which we, we shot was this huge, great um, uh, set of perspex with motion control that took two weeks to shoot. So it was really a combination of things. It was it was it was the idea I made a film about a band, and I saw these guys as a kind of like a sort of a cyber band, and and, and I like the fact that kind of emotionally there's a story that the emotion kind of really wins through in the end and you're invested in the love story, you're invested in the group sort of something together. And, um, and I also sort of thought it was a kind of chance to have fun and let my hair down. <laughs> Maybe the, the actor could address this too, like when you did read the script initially, did you have a sense of the kind of world environment it may be taking place in or was this a surprise when you saw the way it looked uh, and so forth? I think um, at, that, uh, at that point, you um, in in one's career, personally speaking, um, I'd never made a feature film before. Uh, so you read a script and uh, you go as far as you can with it. And most scripts that you read are amazing in, in your mind. And you know, th this was going to be a, a big movie. So everything was just fantastic to me at that time. Um, the chance to have that opportunity, even to f I mean, from flying to New York to read with other actors. And it was just an extraordinary opportunity. So I mean, everything's bright and shiny and new to me at that point in, in my life. So you... uh, I was an old man. <laughs> <laughs> Older now. Uh, I th I love the part. And then the I remember the day that Ian introduced me to this costume designer, Roger. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, what the fuck is this? <laughs> What is going on? I was like, we were warned anyway. Yeah, I, I was like, whoa, hackers, because he Ian uh, got us all to meet all these hackers and hang out with them, and which was really cool. Um, uh, and some of them were really famous hackers at the time, like based on on Johnny's character. None of them dressed like no. like I was. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, so I got I was kind of like at first taken aback, but then we I said, oh, this is this going to be this kind of rock and this kind of movie, and really got into it even more than I would have expected. And, uh, so it was a, you know, Ian's vision was not at all what I had originally seen, but I'm so grateful that. And the music was so ahead of its time. I mean, he put a lot of music. So 
Just a, bit, just a name check for the music. It was Massive Attack, Underworld, Left Field, Prodigy, Orbital, Radiohead, Porter's Head. Have I missed anybody else? Sick, insane. And, and, the, uh, and it was actually it was made before Trade Spotting. And it, I think Danny saw yes. the film, and, and it was partly what um, had made Danny cast uh, uh, Johnny as uh, Sick Boy in Trade Spotting. <laughs> Um, <laughs> it's a long guy, let's make his hair even longer. We, 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 we had to get a record deal in America because I just back we had, a, had an amazing grunge soundtrack with Dave Grohl and on drums and uh, um, Greg Daly and Mike, Mike Mills and R.E.M. etc. etc. And they said, What is this techno shit that you've <laughs> All these record companies came, came, came to hear it. And so we never got the benefit of a record deal to go with the movie, but after the movie came out, a little label did the record, went platinum, and there'd, there'd be three hacker soundtracks that have come out. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> Could pass down and uh, continue the. Uh, <laughs> this was a group you're writing uh, when you read the script. Did you uh, where the kind of world you were going to be uh, performing the movie, the film inside of? Yeah. Um, well, uh, I remember um, thinking that it was just going to be a really fun um, uh, kind of like film about the youth and and the time that we were in and stuff like that. And I had good feelings about it, and I didn't really like look ahead but I was really pleased like when we started doing the all the work and, and you know and, and the clothes and the costuming and all the crew and the cast and everything. So and it was just like a step by step thing. Like I didn't really look ahead that much but I wanted it to be great and we all wanted it to be great. That was one thing that I really loved about the cast. Everybody was so charismatic about like what we were doing and, and I'm glad that that transferred. So that was that was it for me. Uh, it was like a party every day. <laughs> and, and yeah, I agree. Uh, I, I, uh, chemistry just comes to mind, you know, with everybody. Just every scene you see people listening to each other and reacting to each other. And uh, the characters were so strong.